we've talked about palm reading. We've talked about crystal balls, and now it's time to talk about Ouija boards. What is a Ouija board? What does it do? How does it work? What's the idea behind it? Should a Christian play with a Ouija board? What's the Bible have to say about it? We're going to get into all of that today. So Ouija boards actually are not as old as you might think. Uh, this idea that they are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years old, that claim is completely unfounded. There's no evidence to support that. Uh, the Ouija board was patented in 1890 by Elijah Bond. Uh, supposedly, according to my research, when he patented the board, he didn't intend for it to be, you know, a, a way to communicate with the dead. It was supposed to be a parlor game. Go figure. But... As spiritualism grew in the U.S., people started using the Ouija boards to try and communicate with the dead. So, right now, as of now, uh, Hasbro has the patent on, on the Ouija board. Um, just let that sink in for a minute. The supposed talking boards or spirit boards or Ouija boards, whatever you want to call them. Um, <laughs> the same company that makes Poppets is, is making Ouija boards, so... Just, just let that sink in for a minute. But I'm not trying to be snarky. I mean, it really doesn't matter who makes them. I mean, Hasbro could make, like, atomic bombs. That wouldn't mean that they're safe. So supposedly, the idea behind a Ouija board is that this board allows you, someone who is living, to talk to somebody who, who is dead. Uh, the idea is that you are talking to the spirits of somebody who, who ha has passed away. Never seen a Ouija board, I'll throw an image up on the screen. Essentially, you have uh, letters A through Z, uh, you have numbers zero through nine, uh, you have a yes, a no, and a goodbye. You also have a planchette, uh, which is, is, almost looks like a triangle and it has a, a clear window in the middle of it. Uh, two or more people put their fingers on the planchette, they ask, the spirits questions and they answer either by responding yes or no or they would spell out their answer using the numbers and the letters and supposedly it is the spirit not you uh, that is moving the planchette uh, around the board and when the spirits are done talking they say goodbye so some people like uh, people that participate in this they will tell you that you really are communicating with the spirit of somebody who has passed away that's one theory, uh, but that kind of assumes you believe in ghosts to begin with, which I, I don't, but that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother day. Um, some uh, Christians claim that you are talking to a spirit, but it's probably demonic, which I wouldn't rule that out, um, but probably the most common way of explaining what's happening with a Ouija board is the idiomotor effect. People have used this phenomenon to explain things like dowsing uh, and automatic writing. Uh, it's the idea that your hands are moving without you fully being aware uh, that you're moving your hands. That's a good theory. Um, the only thing that concerns me about that is is that your, your body's still moving without you fully being aware of it. So I kind of wonder if you are in some sort of like a trance that that does concern me which is why i don't think uh if ouija boards are something we should play with uh kind of like when i was talking about crystal balls like i don't think it's good for us to like put ourselves in some sort of trance because we are to be alert and in a sober mind so that that is a definite uh, legitimate theory and i'm not saying that i'm ruling that out either um but like i said the idea that your hands are moving without you really being aware of it, it, it concerns me. Like, if I was sitting here, you know, my hand was moving, and I'm like, see that? I'm not doing that. I would be going to see a doctor. Um, that, that, to me, is just a little concerning. But anyway, there are some pretty terrifying stories out there about Ouija boards. I'm sure y'all have heard some of them. Uh, people trying to, like, burn them and they wouldn't burn up. Or people claim that they, like, locked the Ouija board in a closet and it was, like, pounding on the door. Oh, have mercy if I ever experienced that. Burn the whole house down. But it, it's it's hard to say what what is actually going on uh, with the Ouija board. I will say, though, that 
I, I kind of subscribe to the idea of the idiot motor effect because in a lot of cases, if you blindfold people that are playing with Ouija boards, all of a sudden the spirits get very confused. So I, I think a lot of times, th this has kind of been my, what, what I've said in the past two videos, sometimes I think it is people are just out there in left field, like they're just full of it, but I think that there are instances where possibly something demonic could be happening. I don't think that we should just be very quick to dismiss uh, demonic activity. I, I mean, it does happen. And like I said in the past two videos, I don't think it's something that we should go messing around with. And furthermore, scripture does tell us not to try to contact the dead. Uh, it, it spells that out very, very specifically. Yeah, in Leviticus 19.31, it says, Do not turn to mediums or spiritists. Do not seek them out to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Um, and there's, there's a couple other verses which we mentioned in our video on palm reading that tell us to stay away from things like witchcraft and divination and all that jazz. Um, so no, I, I don't think it, it's something that a Christian, like I don't think you should play with a Ouija board. There's just enough like horror stories out there that I'm like, mm, 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 nope. Um, we don't need to try to, to contact people who who are dead that that's not something we need to do and, and I know like I, I say I've said this in the videos before because the Bible says so that is good enough for you uh, if you believe in the inerrancy of scripture and you believe in the infallibility of scripture then because the Bible says so that that is a sufficient answer so hope you guys found this video to be somewhat informative or helpful or something if not sorry uh please subscribe and like this video if you liked it uh if you want us to talk about anything specific let us know and we'll get it done before the month of october is over if we have to carry this series into november then so be it thank you guys for watching thank y'all for listening and i'll see y'all next time bye